So it's time to work on our previous games page. There is a good amount of work to be done, so let's jump into it straight away. The first thing we need to do is to create a special class, which is going to be a model for our data. So this class will contain the properties of our games. In the Project Explorer, let's right click on the project and create a new folder. And we're going to call this folder Models. Then right click on the folder just created and let's add a new class, which will be named Game. And in the Game class, we're going to establish which are the properties of the game. By default, classes get created as internal, but let's change it to public. And then I'll paste the properties of the game class. And these are pretty self-explanatory, but if you're not familiar with the concept of getters and setters, which we can see here in each property, have a look at the show notes below where I point you to a link where I explain properties in more detail. And we also have this game operation type that we haven't defined yet. So the next step is to create this type, which is going to be an enumeration. And again, if you're not familiar with enumerations, have a look at the link below. Now, the final objective here will be to save the games into a database. And we're going to use SQLite for that. SQLite is a super lightweight database solution, and it uses SQL, which is the most popular database language. But even though it's essential for any developer to know SQL, you don't need to know it to follow this tutorial since .NET MAUI handles basic database operations for us. And for the first time, we're going to use a NuGet package, which is a library that we're going to add to our project. And this package is provided by Microsoft. And this package allows us to add data annotations to our model. There are a few different ways to add packages to our project. And the easiest way will be to add some code that depends on that package and then we can add it directly from our file. So here in our model, we added the table attribute, which is optional. And that's going to be the name of the table that will be created in the database. And it wouldn't be necessary in this case, since our class is called game and the name of our table is also called game, but I'm adding it just for teaching purposes. Now, what's really important for us is the primary key attribute along with the auto increment. And these are very important when dealing with databases. The primary key is the unique identifier of a record in a table. And the auto increment means that every time we add a new record, the ID property will increment itself, which means that I don't need to pass the ID when create a new record. So when you add those attributes, and click on the target icon on the left hand side, you can see an option to install the SQLite net package. Once you do that, all you need to do is add the using SQLite statement and the errors will disappear. And if you click on the source code of your project, we can see that the package reference has been added correctly. So we're good to continue. Now we're gonna create a class that will handle the communication with the database. So let's create a new folder called data. And in this folder, we're going to create a class called game repository. And before anything else, let's make it public and get rid of all the unused using directives. And the first thing we need to do is to declare a string that will tell us where the database lives in our file system. Then we'll declare a field that will be of the type SQLite connection provided by the SQLite package. And in the constructor of this class, we're going to initialize the DB path string. So we are assigning this field with the incoming string DB path. Then we'll create a method called init, which will initiate a repository where we're going to instantiate the SQLite connection passing the DB path. And then we'll call the create table method of this object created. And when we call this method, we declare which type we want to use. And that's the model that we created. So that means that this package will create a table based on that model. The properties of that model will be the columns of our table. Now, behind the scenes, this method creates a query that creates a table if it doesn't exist. So that means that this call will only be used if the table can't be found in the database. 
So this package does the heavy lifting for us, so we don't have to write a lot of SQL code at this stage, which is very helpful for beginners. But the next step is to create a method that will retrieve data from the database. So that's going to be a public method that will return a list of games and the name is get all games. And this is the method that we'll call the init method so that the table will be created if it doesn't exist. Then in this method, we're gonna return a list that's retrieved by calling the table method of the connection. And the next step is to create a method that will add a record to the table. So that's gonna be a public void since it doesn't return anything and passing the game object as an argument. And here we simply create another instance of the SQLite connection, passing the DB path and call the insert method passing the game. Then we need the method to delete a record. So again, we create a connection and this time we call the delete method. But our delete method only receives the ID as an argument since the record will be deleted based on the ID only, which is the primary key for that record. Now we need to go to our Maui program class to write some code to make this repository available throughout the application. And for that, we're gonna use this technique called dependency injection. This is a concept that can be quite confusing. Lots of people have a hard time understanding this technique. But the basic idea here is that we are providing this service or this repository in a central location in our program so that it can be used or injected in any other part of our app. And when we're using dependency injection, the code that we write in the program.cs or in the Maui program.cs, we call this registering the service, which in this case is a repository. And we can do this in different ways, but what we're using here is the add singleton, which means that this class will only be instantiated one time in the lifetime of this application. So every time we use the game repository, we're gonna be using the same instance, same object, and if you want to read more about the different ways of implementing dependency injection, you can have a look at the links in the show notes below. So now that we can inject the repository, let's inject it in our parent class, the app class. So we need to declare a field, which will be a public static game repository with a getter and a setter. And then we initialize the repository in the constructor. And that's a pattern that's very common in C-sharp apps. You're gonna see this over and over again in your C-sharp journey. And now we can finally use the repository to add a game to the database. And since we have an enumeration for the game type, I've created a switch statement so that we set the game operation based on the button that was clicked. And that information was stored in the game type field. And now that we have that, we can finally add the game to the repository. So we're gonna call the add method of the repository, passing the new game object. And we are setting the properties of this game based on the values of the game that was just played. So the date is the date time now, the type is the game operation that we just got in the switch statement, and the score is the final score of the game, which is also stored in a field. And the last step is to fetch this data into the previous games class. So in the constructor, we are calling the get all games method from the game repository, which is available since it was initialized in the app class. And we are assigning this call to the games list dot item source. And the games list is going to be a visual component that we're going to declare in XAML. So the final step is to create the UI elements. In the previous games XAML page, let's create a scroll view, which as the name says, allows us to scroll in case the content overflows the limits of the screen. And inside this view, we're gonna create the vertical stack layout. Then we're gonna create a collection view, which is a powerful solution to present objects. And the name of this view will be games list, which is the name that we saw in the code behind. So the item source for the collection view will be fetched from the database. Then we're gonna create an item template, which will contain a data template. And that's where we define the blueprint of the UI element for each object that we're gonna bring in from the list. And each element of the list will have one row and four columns and then we will declare what's going to be inside those cells and it's going to be three labels and a button each label will contain one property of the game class so we are setting which column of the grid the label belongs to and we are saying that the text is bound to one of the properties of the object and the first one will be the date played 
and we can copy that model, declare the columns that those labels belong to, and change the properties. So we have the three properties that we want to display, and we don't want to display the ID, and the last column will be a button that will be used to delete a record. This button will have the text delete, but before we create the event for the button, let's see if we can render the list. So let's quickly play a game. And if we go to previous games, we can see that the list has been rendered. And I already had a game there since I was testing this before making the video. And if we play another one, we can see that the new game gets printed. But let's create the functionality of the delete button. First, I'm using the binding context parameter so I can bind the ID of the row that I want to delete to that button. Then, in the code behind, I'm creating the onDelete method, which will handle the button click. As we've done in the main page, first we need to cast the anonymous object sender to a button, and then grab the binding context, which contains the ID of the row, and pass it to the delete method in the game repository. And I want to refresh the list automatically after the row gets deleted. So I'm calling the database again and assigning the list that comes from the get all games method to the games list dot item source. And of course, we can't forget to point the button to that method on delete using the clicked attribute. With that, we can test the button and we can see that the method gets called in the code behind and the binding context contains the ID that we want. However, we get an error, and that's because the delete method of the SQLite connection demands that the ID is the primary key of a table. And since we passed the ID, but we didn't establish that it belongs to the game class, which is where we declared our primary key, we get this error. But it's very easy to fix. All we need to say is that the ID belongs to the game class. So it's going to be identified as the primary key. So if we test it again, it should work now and the record gets deleted correctly. And we're going to completely revamp the styling of this app in the end, but let's just make it look a little bit better. In the previous game's XAML file, let's set the font size of our properties to 16 and add some padding to the vertical stack layout. So I set the padding in four directions, starting from the left, which is a little bit different from CSS if you have experience with the CSS, which starts from the top and both clockwise. And the last step is to format the date. We're just gonna show the date, but not the hours. So it looks a little bit better already. In the next chapter, let's add some styling because our app looks pretty boring at the moment. 